Sergeant Matthews saw the ground covered with bodies, suddenly felt that something was terribly wrong, everyone had been killed by enemy snipers with a single headshot. Not even getting a chance to take cover, Matthews quickly instructed his spotter Isaac to locate the enemy's position, however the next moment, Isaac discovered an enemy attack, disregarding his own safety, charged out. A bullet grazed his scalp as Isaac swiftly maneuvered, seemingly exploiting a blind spot in the enemy's reaction time, yet the enemy had anticipated his moves, hitting him with three shots, the last one directly to his knee. Perplexed Isaac wondered why the enemy with such exceptional marksmanship didn't go for headshots directly. Before he could think further, at Matthew's request he quickly found cover, sat on the ground gasping for breath as he watched his wounds. Matthew's unable to advance was just over 10 meters away. Matthew's urged him to contact the base for reinforcements, and emphasizing that it was their only chance of survival. Isaac picked up his radio to call for support, but after trying for a while there was no response. The earlier shot had apparently destroyed his communication device deliberately by the enemy sniper. Unable to understand the reason behind the enemy's actions, Isaac had no choice but to hide behind wall and observe. However after a considerable amount of time passed without any sign of the enemy, he decided to create a hole in the wall and use binoculars to locate the enemy, however an unsteady wall caused his finger to be crushed. He called out to Matthews who had already lost consciousness, realizing he couldn't wait around. He used a knife to remove the bullet lodged in his knee for emergency medical treatment, but the intense pain blurred his vision, he was awakened by voices in his headset. Without much thought he quickly began calling for support, hoping it was his only chance for survival. However the questions from the other side became increasingly absurd, starting with confirming his identity and then demanding his retreat password. This raised his suspicion. Finally he was asked to fire a signal flare to confirm his retreat location. Hesitating for a while he refused because it didn't follow the standard procedure. Say that again. I need your location. You, uh, you got an accent. Not American. You have seen through my camouflage. The fuck you talking about? I'm talking about hiding behind words, like you were hiding behind that wall. It turned out that the other side was not his reinforcement but the enemy sniper. Everything made sense now. Initially the two had found it strange that everyone was dead, yet they received a request for support. When they arrived at the support point they couldn't locate the enemy. It turned out to be a classic tactic, surround the point and ambush the reinforcements. Understanding the situation Isaac looked up to the sky and let out a long howl. He never expected to meet his end here. Through the mocking conversation from the enemy, he realized that the sniper wasn't a seasoned veteran but a high school teacher. At this moment Isaac wanted to analyze the sniper's position through the wound on his leg. After careful consideration there were three possible locations. At this point he noticed a radio not far ahead. He decided to take a risk, raising his gun and crawling forward. However when he reached the end of the wall he dared not advance any further. At this moment he took out a water bottle to quench his thirst, only to find it had been shattered. Mocking words from the opponent came through the radio. Are you dehydrated? I know that. That's why I aimed at your water bottle. No, you didn't. You fucking was trying to hit me. No. Isaac didn't believe what the enemy said because even the world's top snipers couldn't accurately hit a moving target at 5,000 feet. The enemy then mentioned Isaac's leg injury, deliberately puncturing his major artery making it impossible to bandage, only bleed to death. Isaac was suddenly frightened because everything the enemy said was true, like a sword hanging over his head, ready to fall at any moment. Due to excessive bleeding, Isaac slowly fell into unconsciousness. At this time static noise came through his headset, waking Isaac up. Analyzing the noise he concluded it might be coming from a garbage dump. To confirm he created a makeshift dummy to draw enemy fire. However he accidentally dropped his helmet and the enemy refrained from shooting, mocking him for being too naive. A gust of wind blew and Isaac felt it was his chance. Using the sandstorm as cover he quickly reached the location of the radio. There he unexpectedly saw a nearby body. The enemy sniper had also died from excessive bleeding. It seemed the enemy sniper was indeed incredibly accurate, as he sorted out his equipment and retreated with the help of the sandstorm. Isaac found a water source in a backpack giving him a temporary chance to catch his breath. He then picked up a communication device he had found but discovered it was already destroyed. The sniper on the radio had anticipated this starting to taunt Isaac. Ignoring the taunts Isaac picked up his binoculars, only to find them also damaged by the sniper. At this moment Matthews outside the wall woke up. Using a mirror to reflect light, he signaled Isaac to prepare for support. Isaac informed Matthews of the possible location of the enemy sniper near the garbage dump. Matthews checked and slowly reached for his sniper rifle. Seeing this Isaac quickly engaged in small talk to distract the enemy's attention, Matthews exerted all his strength, raised the sniper rifle and took aim. Slower, slower, slower. Slower one, what's going on? Matthews exerted all his efforts to set up the sniper rifle in the desert. Isaac prayed for him on the side, but he forgot to turn off the radio, carelessly letting the enemy sniper know about their next move. To protect his teammates, he quickly raised his gun and fired into the air, ready to use this method to draw the enemy's attention. Meanwhile Matthews took the opportunity to counterattack. Just as he was reloading, an enemy bullet hit his shoulder to survive. 
Matthews dragged the sniper rifle and crawled towards cover, just when the hope of staying alive seemed close. A distant sniper shot him in the head. Isaac at this point completely lost hope. He wanted to go home, not to die on the battlefield in Iraq. Suddenly he crawled back to the radio station. He assembled the parts of two radios together, quickly restoring normal communication. He immediately requested reinforcements, but before he could finish speaking, the radio signal was intercepted by the enemy. At this moment, the man understood everything. The one calling for support was actually the enemy sniper. After contacting headquarters, he confirmed the rescue time, and his bait identity had also ended. In a daze, the man passed out. As dusk approached, a crow pecked him awake, along with the roar of a helicopter. He knew that once the aircraft landed, it would fall into the enemy's trap. At this moment, he made a bold decision. He knocked down the protective wall, taking advantage of the smoke to quickly grab the sniper rifle and lock onto the garbage pile. The enemy seemed to realize his intention, immediately opening fire to kill him. As bullets grazed the stones around him, he received strained his instinctive fear, took a deep breath, and identified a hiding spot through the enemy's flames. When the gunfire ended, the opponent seemed to be motionless. As if the previous bullet had killed them, the man couldn't help but stand up and take a deep breath. At this point the rescue aircraft had arrived, and the man received treatment on board. Everything seemed to be over, but suddenly a gunshot rang out. The medic was shot in the head, and eventually the pilot was killed. Everyone died on the spot while the ghost-like sniper continued to call for reinforcements, waiting for new prey to take Mission the bait. Bulldog 17. Reading you, Lima Charlie. Over. 